In the previous tutorial, we were looking at how to compute the present value of an annuity. In this tutorial, let's take a look at how we calculate the future value of an annuity. And this can be very useful because if you're saving money for retirement, you might like to know how much money will be in your account when you retire. If you're saving for your child's college education, same thing, you'd like to know how much money will be in the account when your child is ready to go to college. And in a later tutorial, I'll show you how to solve for the annuity. So you know you need a certain amount of money for college. How much do you need to save each year? But let's, let's look at calculating the future value of an annuity. So basically it would look like this. If we were talking about an ordinary annuity, and an ordinary annuity is the case where the first cash flow begins one period into the future so if you're saving you're not going to start saving for a year the future value would look like this if you're saving a dollars we're going to go backwards here it's easier it'll be easier to see the picture let's say you're saving for 20 years the amount of money you put in the account in year 20 will just be a dollars because there's no interest as soon as you put that deposit in you're just going to add it up the amount of money you put in in year 19 will have earned one year's worth of interest. So the future value will be A times 1 plus R. The amount of money you put in in year 18 will earn interest for two years. It'll earn interest to year 19 and then another year's worth of interest to year 20. So that future value will be A times 1 plus R squared and this will go on and on for n minus 1 periods okay 1 plus r to the n minus 1 period think about it if your first deposit is one year from now and we're going out 20 years your first deposit is made in year 19 I'm sorry is in year 1 so it has 19 years worth of interest to get out to year 20 well, just like we did before, you can factor out the A, and you get this, 1 plus R, A times 1 plus R, plus 1 plus R squared, etc., etc., all the way out to 1 plus R to the N minus 1 power. And with a little bit of algebraic manipulation, you can solve for this. Okay, we're not going to do that, but it turns out that this term inside the brackets is our future value factor. Our future value annuity factor, let's say. And notice that it's independent of the A dollars. So it doesn't matter whether your A is a thousand dollars a year. $15,000 a year, $100,000 a year, $20 a year. This is the same factor. So we figure out the factor and then we just multiply by the annuity. And what's the future value factor? Or I'm sorry, future value annuity factor is equal to the future value factor minus 1 divided by the interest rate. And we can expand that out. It's going to be equal to 1 plus r raised to the nth power minus 1 divided by r. And remember this minus 1 is not up here in this formula here. This is n minus 1. This is 1 plus r to the n and then you subtract out one. And so let's do an example. Suppose you save you save ten thousand dollars per year for thirty years. And let's assume we have an eight percent interest rate. So what we want to ask ourselves is, how much will you have in your account when the last deposit is made? 
Well, this is the future value annuity question. So using the formula we have, we're going to have future value is going to be equal to 1.08 to the 30th power minus 1 divided by 0 0.08 and we're going to multiply all of that by 10,000 by the amount of our annuity. So let's see what we get. 1.08 raised to the 30th power minus 1 divided by the interest rate which is 0 0.08 and we get a factor. This factor in here is 113.28 multiply that by our annuity and so you're going to have one million one hundred and thirty two thousand eight hundred and thirty two dollars and eleven cents now let me show you how to do this on the calculator it's nice to know how to use this formula comes in handy if you don't have your financial calculator with you although now everybody seems to have a smartphone there are a lot of uh, financial calculator apps that you can get for your iPhone or your Android phone and some of them mimic the uh, Texas Instruments or the HP calculators they're rather expensive but you can find ones that are just a couple of bucks and it's kind of handy to have because if you've forgotten your financial calculator you can still use your your um, smartphone to do the calculation. Now let's look at what we have here. Um, we know that n is equal to 30. Oh, let me clear the time value of money space. n is equal to 30. The interest rate is 8 percent. The payment is 10,000. And let's compute the future value and we get the same thing 1,132,832 and 11 cents and the reason you get the same thing is because the calculator used the same formula so quite straightforward quite easy if we have an annuity due just like with the ordinary just like with the present value of an annuity so this is pretty easy to figure out the future value for an annuity due just equals the future value for the ordinary annuity times 1 plus the interest rate. So if we assume that you made your first payment, your first deposit today rather than a year from today, all we'd have to do is take this number and multiply it. Let me change the sign to positive times 1.08 and we get wait I made a mistake there let me clear that 1 million one hundred and thirty two thousand eight hundred and thirty two and eleven cents times 1.08 I think I multiplied it by 0 0.08 and I'm going to get in this case so I'll have 1,132,832.11 times 1.08 and I'm going to get 1,223,458 and 68 cents and let me just show you how to do it with the calculator again you can change the calculator to the beginning of period cash flow you do that by hitting second BGN and then you hit second set to change it to BGN and then let's see what our calculation is all the numbers are the same so we can probably just hit compute future value and we get the same thing so the calculator just redoes that let me just reset my calculator you should keep it on 
end of period. If you see the BGN there, you're doing annuity due. Normally, we do ordinary annuity, so I like to keep it set at end of period.